The Duggars were a big get for TLC. They helped to put the network on the map. Some might say that TLC went from being the learning channel to the lurking channel. We're not necessarily tuning in to learn. <laughs> We're kind of tuning in more for the train wreck. Discovery ultimately became a multi-billion dollar company, and now they own Warner Brothers. We're positioned to get 200 million homes, 300 million homes, because we have all the content that people love. And so I think coming together, we're not just better together, I think we're the best media company in the world. Reality TV to me is a very powerful force. 19 Kids and Counting becomes a recruiting tool for the Institute. The Duggar family helped cement TLC and Discovery Communications as a reality TV powerhouse. The Learning Channel, which once featured educational television, transformed into the lurking channel and Discovery Communications became a multi-billion dollar company. Through mergers and acquisitions, you can now watch HBO cultural phenomena like Game of Thrones, The Last of Us, Succession, on the same streaming service that you watch 90 Day Fiance and Sister Wives. That is truly wild. Amazon Prime just released its four-part docuseries, Shiny Happy People. And to sum up my thoughts on the series in one word, if you have followed the Duggar family over the years, or if you're a member of the Fundy Snark community, this might not have been exactly a bombshell docuseries, but if you're like me, a once casual watcher of 19 Kids and Counting, and maybe you followed the criminal scandals of Josh Duggar as they unfolded in the media. This docuseries may have surprised and disturbed you like it did me. TLC made a choice to platform this family and thrust their cult-like religious beliefs into the mainstream. It was obviously precious little, if any, vetting of the Duggar family before they were put on national television. Jim Bob Duggar, I mean, there's really no other way to describe him other than he's a monster. The popularity of 19 Kids and Counting was mutually beneficial to the network and to Jim Bob Duggar, and both entities had a vested interest in keeping the show going for as long as possible by any means necessary. Despite the horrific revelations that surfaced about oldest child Josh Duggar, the show rebranded and persisted. It wasn't until Josh was eventually arrested on federal charges of possessing CSAM that the network finally pulled the plug on the family. Jill Dillard, fourth born child of Michelle and Jim Bob, actually participated in the docuseries and what she had to say was shocking. She experienced a lot of trauma throughout her childhood and on top of that, TLC exploited her trauma for ratings. And come to find out, Jim Bob, her own father, was withholding all the money the family made and she never saw a dime for participating in the show throughout the years. We have a lot to discuss. Let's get into today's video. <laughs> Hey everyone, what's up? It's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. My background looks a little bit different right now because I am changing the wallpaper in my office. So just bear with me for today's video. First and foremost, I just want to put out there that I am not a Duggar family expert by any means. I would describe my viewership of 19 Kids and Counting and then Counting On as casual at best. I would catch episodes here and there. I knew who the family was. I knew who the family members were. I was also familiar with the family's religious beliefs. And like most Americans, when all of the criminal scandals of Josh Duggar broke, I did follow along those stories in the news. If I get any details wrong in this video, I do apologize in advance. 
I am an avid watcher of the YouTube channel Fundy Fridays and Jen, who is the host of that channel, she was featured in Shiny Happy People. Just a very brief high level overview of the Duggars. The Duggars consist of Matriarch and Patriarch, Jim, Bob and Michelle. They had 19 biological children around the time that they were at about a dozen or so, they got on the radar of Discovery Health and they actually decided to tap the family for a special on just what it's like to have so many kids. What Discovery failed to realize or maybe they knew but chose to ignore was that the Duggar family was part of this religious fundamental movement called the IBLP, which stands for the Institute of Basic Life Principles. This religious movement followed the teachings of a man by the name of Bill Gothard. The teachings of Gothard and the IBLP could be described as extreme and cult-like. That's actually what Jill described her upbringing as in the docu-series. A lot of you have come across my channel for my coverage of the show Sister Wives. I have discussed many topics when it comes to the Brown family, Mormon fundamental polygamy, the AUB, and the mistreatment that I have perceived the women and children of these movements endure. TLC Discovery, I'm going to be using those network names interchangeably. They have made an obscene amount of money showcasing atypical families. Families with lots of kids, families with lots of wives, families with lots of sets of multiples, families with members facing various physical challenges. The network and powers that be clearly spent a good amount of time sussing out that next unicorn family that was structured in a unique way that would garner a lot of views and in turn make a lot of money. What the network and powers at B didn't seem to do was background vetting of these families. And one of those families were the Duggars. The Duggars not only held what many would consider extreme religious beliefs, they also held horrific family secrets that existed long before they ever stepped foot in front of the camera. These programs have built TLC Discovery into this international empire. TLC has run into problems over the years when families that they have featured on their shows have gotten swept up in scandal. Here Comes Honey Boo Boo was a very popular show on TLC that featured the family of a breakout star from the show toddlers and tiaras. Mama June is the matriarch of this family and the mother of Alana aka Honey Boo Boo and at one point while the show was filming Mama June started dating a man who was a registered sex offender. DLC slash Discovery pretty quickly canceled the series once this information came to light. They canceled the series in 2014 and issued this statement saying... TLC has canceled the series Here Comes Honey Boo Boo and ended all activities around the series effective immediately. Supporting the health and welfare of these remarkable children is our only priority. TLC is faithfully committed to the children's ongoing comfort and well-being. At the time of its cancellation, TMZ was actually reporting that an entire season of Honey Boo Boo had already been filmed and was scrapped. All in all, when it came to handling the Honey Boo Boo situation, I think TLC made the right move. I thought it was the right move to cancel the show and take a stand against platforming families that are putting children in danger. Come to find out, doing the morally correct thing definitely has a monetary limit 
at TLC. The powers that be are only willing to risk so much of their bottom line to do the right thing. Here Comes Honey Boo Boo was a popular show, but it by no means was 19 kids and counting. Therefore, the Duggar kids could continue to be exploited even after the revelations of Josh Duggar's assault in 2015 surfaced. And keep in mind, this is just one year after the network canceled Honey Boo Boo. So what was the initial scandal? Well, in 2015, at the height of popularity for 19 Kids and Counting, In Touch Weekly submitted a FOIA request for some police reports. FOIA stands for Freedom of Information Act. They submitted a request for these police reports after allegations surfaced that Josh sexually assaulted young girls when he was a teenager. This whole story is all kinds of fucked up, pardon my language. From the actual story itself to the publicizing and re-traumatization of the victims who were minors at the time, it was just all really messed up. One of the revelations that came to light when the police reports were published was that several of the victims were actually Josh's own sisters. These assaults took place before the network ever caught wind of the Duggars and decided to feature them on their network. So that in and of itself opens up a litany of questions. First, how did the network not know about this? And furthermore, what vetting process does TLC or Discovery go through when casting reality TV show personalities? And furthermore, and this question is pondered in the documentary, how much of a narcissistic monster does Jim Bob have to be to have this family secret and still agree to do this show? Throughout the docuseries, Jim Bob says he always viewed the reality show as a mission. In my opinion, I think it's very clear that Jim Bob was never glorifying God with this show. He was glorifying himself. After the assault perpetrated by Josh Duggar came to light in 2015, the network canceled 19 Kids and Counting, but that wasn't it for the Duggar family. Between Jim Bob and the powers that be at the network, they figured out a way to rebrand the show and keep it going. They removed Josh from the show and instead decided to focus on the daughters going forward calling the new show Jill and Jessa Counting On. You had no choice in the fact that 4.4 million people watched your wedding. It was the highest rated show at that time that TLC had ever had. The day before we got married, I signed a contract. I just saw the signature page. It was like yes. on the end of the kitchen table, like, hey, we just need you guys to sign these. Like everybody was signing them. We, I didn't know what it was for. What we found out later was that it was a commitment of your life for the next five years to the show. They had their negotiations. They had their business meetings. It just wasn't with us. The women and girls in this family, they are really the draw of that show. When they have more babies, that's how they get a lot of their viewership. The Duggar women are doing the labor, literally doing the labor, but they're really being shut out of who has the money and who has the power. After Israel's birth, we asked TLC to pay us enough just to cover what our out-of-pocket costs were for health insurance. They said they paid the family. Pay the family means we don't get anything at that point. I said, well, we paid your dad, so take it up with him. I never received any payout. For seven and a half years of my adult life, I was never paid. I've never said no to my family before and just been like, no, no, no. That basically they're like, well, you have to. And that's when we realized like that I had signed this the day before we got married. Signing practices. And then I'm like, oh, I remember that. That's not what I thought I was signing. Around that time, my dad said, thanks to Derek, I'm gonna go ahead and pay some people, pay some of the older kids, a lump sum. But in order to receive that, you had to sign another deal with my dad. It would be like forever. We were automatically like, we're done. We found out on social media that our relationship, if we ever had a relationship with TLC, came to an end at that time. So let me get this straight. Jill worked on this show for seven of her adult years and never saw a dime of compensation. Jim Bob straight up robbed his own kids. Isn't there a commandment against stealing Jim Bob? 
A subject for another video could be the exploitation of children on reality TV shows and social media. With child actors, we all remember the stories of Gary Coleman and Macaulay Culkin of these child actors whose parents stole all of their money and really took advantage of them. There are laws in place now for that are meant to protect child actors. They're not perfect, but it's a start. In my opinion, there absolutely should be protections in place for children featured on reality TV shows or who appear on social media whose parents use that to generate a source of income. Okay, so when the family gets cast for this show, all of the kids are minors, so you pay everyone as a family Um, I see problems there, but okay, I guess. But after the show gets canceled and then rebranded, when Jim Bob is no longer the focal point of the show, why on earth does TLC allow Jim Bob and his cronies to be intermediaries between the network and how the cast gets paid? Paying out as a family is actually common for TLC. We saw them do that on Sister Wives, and I can only imagine it's probably similar for other families on the network as well. The problem inherently with this form of payment is that you're relying on the integrity of the family member deemed in charge to dole out the money fairly to all the family members that are participating in filming. I have learned from watching shows like 90 Day Fiance, when you enter into a contract like a prenuptial agreement, each party has to be represented by separate lawyers. And this is to ensure that one party is not being railroaded by the other. I would think that having child advocates working at the network on behalf of these reality stars would be really beneficial not only to the child reality stars themselves, but to the network to kind of cover their bases. As I said at the beginning of this video, I am no Duggar expert. I just really wanted to touch on these topics because I do watch a lot of TLC reality shows and I was just so appalled by what Jill had to say in this docuseries regarding the network pushing her to film and then her dad essentially robbing her of all the money. I'm also appalled that TLC continued to film this family when they have a track record of taking a stand and canceling other shows but they continued to film this family after the assault revelations came to light about Josh Duggar and the cover up by Jim Bob because the network saw dollar signs. One of the things we learn in this docu-series is that child labor and child exploitation is fairly common in the IBLP, but the level of exploitation that the Duggar girls specifically went through by not only working on this show unpaid, but also to have the trauma of their childhood publicized and them have to relive it on camera for everyone to see, it takes it to another level of just heartbreaking and horrific. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Reality Squad, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Much love.